Hello, I'm Anthony Hernandez, and this is part two of my series on how to make Pong in Game Maker Studio 2. So where we left off last time is we made sprites, and we made artwork for our sprites, and then we attached those sprites to objects, and we placed those objects inside of our room where they would be placed at the start of a game of Pong. But right now they don't do anything. That's what we're gonna change today. We're gonna be focusing on the paddles and making them move the way they're supposed to in a game of Pong. And to do this, we're going to be working on our objects. So I'm going to go over here to objects, and we're going to start with the right paddle. So I'm going to double click the right paddle, and it's going to take me to that object. And you might recognize this from last time. So we got over here, this is where we worked last time. We changed the name, and then we attached a sprite to our object. And today we're going to be working with events. So events are important things that happen in the game, such as an object colliding with another object, or when a certain key gets pressed down. Today, right now, we're going to be working with step events. So steps are a sort of measurement of time. What I mean by this is that for every step that occurs, GameMaker is going to take all of the code that we've written and execute it. So by default, um, GameMaker is set to run at 60 steps per second. So every 60, st every, or 60 times every second, our code is going to be updated. So we're going to go to step and then step. That's add event, step, and then step in case you didn't follow. Uh, these first lines here you'll see are uh, backslashes uh, followed by some, some plain English here. Uh, these are called comments. So this isn't code. Uh, these are comments. So anytime you start off with two backslashes, uh, you're making a comment. So this is a comment. This is a comment. And what we use comments for is we use comments for uh, commenting or describing uh, the code that we're going to be writing below. So for us, since this is the right panel, and the right panel is going to be using the up and down arrow keys to move, uh, what we're going to need to do first is check to see if the up key has been pressed. So we're going to start writing our first line of code ever, and it's going to be an if statement. So Start with the word if, and then open parentheses, and then inside of this, these parentheses is going to be our if statement we're, we're going to be checking for. So we're going to be checking if our up key is pressed, and that's going to look like this. So keyboard underscore check, another open parentheses, and then vk underscore up. And then close parentheses for this first set right here. You'll see they're highlighted and then another closing parentheses for the second set that is now highlighted. And then after every if statement comes an open curly brace. And then every time I place an open curly brace or an open parentheses, I didn't do it for this if statement, but I automatically place the closing one because I know one's going to, a closing one's going to be coming up and I don't want to forget about it. Um, otherwise I'll run into problems with my code later on. And then inside of these curly braces where we place the code that's going to happen once this if this if statement is true. And for us, that's going to be motion. Well, let's place a comment first. We're going to move the paddle up. So it's going to be motion underscore set. And then I'm going to go back a little bit because you'll notice that Game Maker Studio has a sort of autofill. So anytime you start typing, it'll pull up stuff that matches what you're typing um, as like suggestions. But also another helpful thing about this is it tells you if it's a function, it tells you what parameters. So inside of the parentheses is what's called a parameter. It'll tell you what parameters are needed for that function. So here we've got DIR and speed. DIR is short for direction and then speed. So we're going to do motion underscore set. And then here we've got to uh, specify a direction and a speed. And it also says that down here, which is also helpful. So I'm going to explain direction right now. And I'm going to do that. By, I'm going to create a sprite. You don't have to follow along with this. Um, I just need like a, a drawing board to draw on for a second. So I'm going to draw a grid. So we got our y-axis right there, and here's our x-axis. 
So the way direction works in Game Maker is we're going to put 90. I'm going to explain right now. So 90 is directly up. So here's here's zero. Excuse my terrible drawing skills with the well, on the computer. So here's 90 degrees is up. 180 degrees would be to the left. And 270 would be going down. And 360 would also be going to the right, but also zero is also right. Uh, something else that we can do is you can also go backwards. So this is the positive direction. So positive 90, positive 180. We can also go backwards. So negative 90 could also be down as well as two, positive 270. And a negative 180 is the same as positive 180. And then negative 270 is the same as positive 90. So just, we're going to be using that right now in our right paddle object. So I'm going to go back to my right paddle. And then, so up is 90. So the direction we're going to be using is 90. And then for speed, we're just going to put 5. And then in most programming languages, after after a statement within, a, within an if statement, so this is an if statement, and this is a statement inside of the if statement, uh, you put a semicolon. Uh, in Game Maker Studio or Game Maker language, uh, you don't have to. It's a very forgiving language. So if you forget to put one there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but in more complex languages that you might move on to later on, uh, such as C++, uh, those programming languages aren't as forgiving. And if you forget a semicolon, you'll run into a bunch of errors. Uh, so for to create good programming practices further on, uh, we're going to place that semicolon there. All right, so next we're going to check if the down arrow key is pressed. So it's gonna be, it's gonna look almost the same as above. So we're gonna if keyboard check, and then here you might have guessed instead of VK underscore up, it's gonna be VK underscore down, curly braces, and then move the panel down, motion, underscore set and then we can use negative 90 or 270 I'm going to use negative 90 and then we're going to do the same speed all right so we've got two if statements here we're going to run the game to see what this looks like so we'll give it a second to load up Anytime, something else to know is that anytime you run your game, anytime you press this play button, Game Maker automatically saves everything inside of your project. So it just automatically saved all the code that we've written, that we just wrote right down right now. So I'm going to press the up arrow key. And I, I pressed it and just let go, but it just kept going up. I'm going to press the down arrow key now. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, it came back. So I'm just tapping it. And you'll notice it just keeps moving, which isn't exactly what we want. We want. We want the paddle to move while the player is holding down the key, and we want it to stop moving when the player lets go of the key. So we're going to change our code a little bit right now. So right now we just got two if statements. We're going to change this to an else if statement. The second if statement is going to be an else if statement. And what this means is it's only going to check for this if this is not true. If this isn't happening, it's going to check for this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a final statement here, which is going to be a little bit different than the first two, and it's going to be if no key has been pressed. And it's just going to be a, an else statement. And what this means is that, so if this is true, it's going to run this. If this isn't true, it's going to check for this. If this is true, it's going to run this. If this isn't true, it's going to run this. So it's going to run this only if these two are not happening which is basically what we want. So else motion underscore set, and then here it's gonna be zero, zero, because we're not gonna go in any direction and we're not gonna go any speed, we're not gonna move at all. So that's all set for our right paddle. We can run the game to see what it looks like, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to work on our left paddle now. And what I'm going to do is, because our left paddle is going to be basically, it's going to be very similar, almost the same. 
I'm just gonna copy paste this. It's not very good practice to copy copy code. Um, we're gonna do it in this case because it's a simple code, and we know we know what we're gonna change. So we're gonna go add event step step. I'm gonna select all this and delete it, and then paste everything from before. Uh, there is something a little bit different here. So you'll notice that we used this VK underscore for the up, up, down, up and down keys. So I'm gonna just take a look at this. So VK, here's our, our autocomplete. Whenever we type in VK, and you'll notice that everything here is, it's like a special key. So you got the escape key, enter key, and then the arrow keys. Uh, there's no letters here. If you want to use a letter in Game Maker Studio, you do something a little bit different. You do ORD, oops, ORD, and you'll see we got a function here. It's ORD car, a uh, car short for character. So ORD, and then some more parentheses, and then inside those parentheses, you can put uh, quotation marks, and then inside those quotation marks, you put the the key, the air, the letter key that you're looking for, and it's important that it's capital. So for up. For moving up, we're going to use the W key on the left panel. So let's change this comment, check if the W key has been pressed. And then this can be kept the same. Uh, but then over here, else if keyboard underscore check, it's going to be ORD, open and closing parentheses, and then quotation marks, S for going down. Change this comment, check if the S key is pressed, and then our else statement can stay the same because there's no, there's no if, there's no if statement that we gotta change, and it's the action isn't going to change either. So let's run our game now, and see what happens. So now I'm gonna press the up key. I'm gonna let go, and you'll see it stops. So now we're not moving forever, and I'll check the left panel now too. So the game works the way we want it to, except for there's one thing, which is, you'll see right there, we can go out of bounds on the top and bottom edges. But we did place walls there, so what's going on? Well, let's take a look at our wall. What we have to do is, we, if we want this wall to collide with stuff, we've gotta, We've got to add some code to that. Remember I talked about events over here and there's an event for colliding with stuff. So that's what we got to do. But before we create that event over here, let's take a look at our wall and we're going to set this to solid. And when you do that, when you click it and you hover over this, it'll tell you what this does. So it says solid instances will automatically be placed back in their previous position when in collision. And what this means is that our paddles won't be able to move the wall around which is what we want. We want our walls to be sturdy. We want them to stay there and stop that panel from moving any further. So let's go back to our, our panel. I'm at the right panel right now. Let's add that collision event. Go down to add event, collision, and you're gonna select the object you want, which for this case is object wall. And then here, what we wanna do is we wanna stop the panel. The way that's gonna look, we've seen this code before. It's going to be motion underscore set zero zero. So it's exactly the same as our else statement over there, except here we're not, we're not checking for anything else within, within this object collision. If we just know if this object is colliding with the object wall, we want it to stop. Let's not forget that semicolon there. And then what I'm going to do is because it's going to be the exact same thing on the left panel, Another way that you can copy code, if you're going to copy all the code in an event, you just right click on the event, go to copy event, let's go to that paddle, just click anywhere inside of the events box, click paste event, and now we got that same event in there. So let's run our game now and see if, see if we can collide with those walls. All right, let's go. So our top wall works and our bottom wall works. 
So there you have it. We've got our paddles working the way they need to. In the next episode, we're going to focus on the ball and getting that to move the way it's supposed to. And after that, we'll be pretty much done. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.